Our society is centralized around the idea of technology. We use technology in our daily lives to help make further advances not only in our own lives, but in lives all around the world. We see technology in our cell phones and our laptops. Technology is everywhere. But do we ask ourselves, where does our technology come from? Throughout history, we've seen many advancements in technology. But a certain time period known as the Renaissance helped create many t technological advancements which even contribute to our lives today. Yes, the Renaissance, the time period where, yes, art was made, but also great technological advancements were also achieved. Though many people are going to argue about the time period of the Renaissance, for the purpose of this, we're going to use the time period from the 14th to the 17th century, just to make this, art, this easier to understand. Now, like I said before, many technological advancements were made during this time. Too many to count. For the purpose of this, we're only going to look at three specific examples. Yes, these examples are three of the best inventors that came during this time, but they are not the only three that came. First, we're going to look at the invention of the telescope. Then we'll look at the invention of the pocket watch, or a stopwatch, or a wristwatch, whichever you prefer. Same idea. And finally, we're going to look at the printing press. All of these inventions have helped to shape not only the lives of people living in the Renaissance, but also our lives today. Our society today is fascinated by the idea of the universe and everything that surrounds us. But as we continue to expand our knowledge of the social system, we must also understand the basis of this knowledge. In June 1609, Galileo Galilei used the prototype of a telescope made in Denmark and created advancements and improvements in this invention to help create help create a greater power and preciseness for this telescope. The design of the telescope prior to Galileo's involvement were called refracting telescopes, which use a lens as its primary source to form an image. Over time, in, over time in the 17th century, a new design called the reflecting telescope was invented, which uses a single or combination of curved mirrors that reflect light and form an image. Isaac Newton is generally, cre generally credited with building the first reflecting telescope. The telescope now used in our astronomical research are telescopes that are just a more advanced model of Newton's idea of a reflecting telescope. Now, even though the refracting telescope did become obsolete due to Newton and Galileo, it is still the premise, premise of the idea of the lenses used in our high-powered cameras today. Our research into the aspects of the universe, though, holds many different levels of importance in the eye of our society. Many people predict that over time, we will see the end of our world to the all of its resources and a continuing addition of pollution. As we continue to destroy our planet, people may look at other aspects of the universe for an answer to our pandemic, either for a new planet for people to populate, or if there exists a planet which presents as us with a way to deal with our own global problems. Now, the telescope even today, though, it's used in naval battles, it helped guide ships, it's used for military warfare, even used for the picture to take your family photo. All these aspects of this small idea made during the Renaissance has helped contribute to many advancements in our society. In our modern day society, information is easily accessible by everyone throughout the world. However, this has not always been the norm. The printing press was invented in 1453, which helped to revolutionize the idea of the circulation of information and make it more easily accessible to all. Prior to the invention of the printing press, though, people would manually inscribe the writings on parchments, and to make copies, people were forced to manually cop out these, copy out these writings. This form of copying led to amounts of books being scarce. The printing press changes, as it provided a way to create almost an assembly line, creating a mass production of books. The sadistics show the drast drastic improvements the printing press accomplished. A single printing press during the Renaissance could produce 3,600 pages per workday, while block printing, a method used pr prior to the printing press, could only produce 2,000, and high copy would only f produce a few per day. This fast improvement helped to spread the ideas of, of the time of the Ren Renaissance. The printing press also, with its help, to the circulation of information also helped the idea of the newspapers as we see them today, which help circulate information to everyone in society to make it more easily accessible and make everyone understand what's happening in their not only their own society, but in their global society as well. 
the printing press also brought around the idea of the portable print of printers we have in our own houses where we're able to print our papers we write for school or different things we need for work but the printing press also helped to create the idea of our information highway the internet the internet is this vast idea where all information is available to anyone regardless of your location in the world people in North America can be sharing people information with people in Asia without any problems the few IT errors here and there but a lack of problems <laughs> but this idea of the circulation of information helps create a global society no longer would somebody in a small town not know what's happening in their country Everyone is open to all the ideas and information circulating throughout the world, creating a greater understanding in all aspects of society. With our society constantly moving, time becomes important. As people try to plan out the schedule, the event of the clock helped to give people a way to properly organize their time, to hopefully fulfill more in their days. In 1410, Filippo Brunchelli invented a spring-driven clock, which was portable, allowing people to easily view the time wherever they were. Prior to this, people needed to run around and find a clock in a fixed location to find out the time. Even in our society today, though, we have grown this infatuation with wearing watches. It is common conception in our society that people around everywhere wear some sort of watch on their wrist, on their phone, something. Now, the idea of the portable clock also helped to emphasize our idea of scheduling and better time management in our society which can help to create more advancements in a shorter period of time. We've also grown this infatuation with wearing watches as I said before. Watches have become fashion statements. We see constantly new watch companies propping up. Popping up. We all, but we will also see all these different brands and the idea of watches. Watches made with gold, watches with diamonds, all these different ideas about a little portable clock originating from the Renaissance. Now the main idea of the portable clock though helps with time management. Especially in our society today it helps out. Because our society is so goal oriented, an idea of scheduling time and managing it is essential to making further advancements not only in technology but in all aspects of life. The inventions of the Renaissance may be considered dismal when compared to the modern technological advancements we are making today, but they helped to lay the groundwork for those for our current advancements. The telescope helped us to discover so much more about not only our own world, but also the universe that surrounds us. The printing press helped path pave the way for our modern highly congested circulation of information portable clock helped. It is still seen in our society today in the form of watches, which are used for their original purpose of displaying time, but found a secondary purpose also as a fashion statement. These inventions have helped shape our society and technologically inclined culture we live in today. Without these basic inventions, we would not be able to create the technological breakthroughs we attempt to try today. These inventions help open the pathway our society is taking towards a technologically centralized culture. Without these prior inventions, though, where would we be today? Would we still have all the technological advancements we use in our everyday society? These are the questions we need to ask and be grateful for the inventions that were made prior to us so we can use them, those core ideas, to live out our lives today.